Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony. I'm from a company called Medipost. I'd first like to thank ARM for putting a great conference once again and giving us the opportunity to tell you about our story. We are a Korean company um, established in the year 2000, uh, based out of Seoul, Korea. And since 2005, we've been publicly traded on COSDAQ with a current market cap of 650 million US dollars. And we have a Korean um, business um, of doing private cold blood bank since 2000, and that's our cash cow business to this day. We, we have over 200,000 units of privately held stored cold blood units. And um, since 2001, the company started doing R&D work using cold blood, donated cold blood as a starting material for mesenchymal stem cell, like stem allergenic cell therapy, um, uh, product profiling and research and clinical development. So our Korean office is doing that in the Asian region, including Korea, obviously, and Japan and China um, and, and Eastern Europe. And we also have some nutritional supplements and stem cell-derived cosmetic product line a, a launched in Korea. We have a U.S. subsidiary, that's why I'm based in Rockville, Maryland, a private company held 100% by the par uh, parent public company. We do um, clinical development work in North America, U.S., and, and Canada, some in Central and South America, as well as the European Union and Australia. So basically, we have the clinical um, development that's been taking place in Korea um, and, and expanding that into uh, US and, and Europe. We have three products in the pipeline. Um, Cardistem is our flagship product. That's, this is to treat uh, osteoarthritis or college defect. And I'll show you some of our pivotal data that was generated in Korea, a few slides down. That's actually been through phase one, two, and three clinical trials in Korea with the biologics um, cell therapy guideline that's pretty similar to the uh, CBRA guidelines, or US FDA guidelines on BLA for cell therapy products. This is again allergenic cell therapy product for osteoarthritis. We've been um, granted with BLA, biologics license application by the Korean FDA in 2012. So it's been on the market for three years. Same product has gone through phase one to a clinical trials with 12 patients successfully completed with US FDA in the, here in the US. And we look to do a phase 2B slash 3 IND meeting next year with, with the FDA. Second product is called Pneumostem. I'll show you two slides worth of data on that. It's for the indication called bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Um, for prematurely born babies, the extreme preterm babies. I'll show you some data in that. That's um, an often indication for in Korea and also for both US FDA and EMA, uh, drug, uh, often drug designated. That's gone through first in human phase one after a series of preclinical publications in Korea. Uh, phase one safety for, for nine babies completed and published. Phase two with 70 babies, 7-0, double-blinded placebo control study has completed. Enrollment and treatment in Korea, and we're waiting down on the data on locking, uh, locking and, and unblinding. And, and if with the efficacy um, data, hopefully from the phase two, we'll be granted the early access in Korean market, uh, given the orphan status. Last product we, I'm not going to talk about today is called Neurostem. This is for Alzheimer's disease, uh, advanced stage, or mid to late stage. And we've successfully completed the, uh, phase one with nine patients. Phase one with nine patients, uh, and then we are phase 2A in Korea. Uh, with pre-IND stage with uh, US FDA on that. So this is just an overview about the, the CMC. We get the donor material, which is unit of cord blood. And from that, we do infectious disease screening and donor eligibility test for selective expansion of uh, cord blood-derived stem cells that can be safely uh, transplanted as allergenic cell material without HLA class matching requirements, so it's an allergenic off-the-shelf concept. With the approved product, and which is commercial, uh, avail commercially available in Korea, we manufacture in-house GMP, some 1,800 square meter flow space GMP approved by Korean FDA in, in Korea. And that manufacturing involves initial expansion into a vial we call drug substance that's been stored with validated uh, shelf life of three years in liquid nitrogen. Where we get the drug uh, order prescription from orthopedic surgeons, then the cells are thawed and released with five-day process in ambient temperature that is 4 to 20 degrees Celsius with 48, degrees, uh, 48 hours shelf life. 
And so, as I said, this was approved by uh, Korean FDA at the time, 2012, and been on the market commercially available three years. So the label is for repetitive endotraumatic traumatic cartilage degeneration or defect, including degenerative osteoarthritis, we'll show some data, without any age limit, that is the upper age limit for, for the patients. And the product is called Cartistem. This has been developed with us and Samsung Medical Center Department of Orthopedics. And the Korean market status, we have BLA, Biologics License Application, that's essentially a market approval for biological products. Again, very similar framework in Korea. 2012, launched, and since then, just over three years, we've treated on market just under 2,500 patients uh, as of end of September. Uh, this is available throughout the country in Korea, 270 or so hospitals. And then 600 patient Post-market surveillance was uh, required by KFDA at the time of approval. We've completed that, which included six-month initial market surveillance of all 600 patients. That's uh, completed without any uh, issues there. U.S. status, as I said, uh, FDA IND cleared for phase 1, 2A. This was cleared when our pivotal study in Korea was being conducted, and the clinical trials number at the .gov. And the, as I mentioned, the FDA phase 2B3 uh, is planned for next year. We in, in, anticipate to bring all our clinical and, and market data from Korea and various other markets that we've, we've managed to enter into and, and have a discussion with FDA in terms of the next phase design and scale. So the product involves two components. One is a vial of HUCB MSC, that's human umbilical cord blood, mesenchymal stem cell, a population, um, combined together with a biopolymer, that's freeze-dried or lyophilized biopolymer, hyaluronic acid, and that gets mis mixed at the uh, OR and then implanted to the defect, either via uh, open surgery or arthroscopic surgery by surgeon, a simple procedure. So here's an example of um, a patient from one of our trials. You can see the defect, that's a bare bone, white um, cartilage is worn out, pretty large size defect in this case. So a single treatment with the little holes drilled under the bony area, and then the cell plus the gel mix is implanted into the holes and covered on the top without any membrane patching or any other, other uh, uh, implantation or other devices. And then three months follow-up and then 20 months follow-up of arthroscopic second look view, you can see that area has regrown cartilage. And that typically takes 10 to 12 weeks of regeneration. And this is not a replacement therapy. Uh, it's a cell therapy whereby the cells are secreting factors, so the phenomenon known as paracard mechanism, paracard action, where you can see in this animation there's a defected cartilage, the bone is exposed in this patient, where the, bones, the, the patients still have chondrocytes, or so progenitors to chondrocytes. The cells that we implant in there, then basically go there and live and stay only for up to eight to 10 weeks in animal models. They respond to the environment and then secrete our signals in the forms of cytokines and growth factors, and they then stimulate endogenous chondrocytes or progenitors to chondrocytes to generate and secrete out the cartilage matrix, which is all endogenous. So cartilage defects can be graded into four by the International Cartilage Repair Society, and the grade four lesion right at the bottom is the one we're targeting. The current intervention of care available, it's a procedure known as microfracture, that only works for the patients generally younger than 55 years of age with a small size defect, two to three square centimeters, and that's a limitation in the literature. The other extreme, you can do a total knee or partial knee replacement, that's a knee implant, and you can only do that once you're generally over the age of 70 because that implant would have a, a general lifespan of about 10 years. And there's in between for acute uh, sports injury or, or car accident type of injuries, uh, another cell therapy out in the market for over 10 years is called autologous chondrocyte implantation. That's again really for an acute lesions rather than a general degenerative condition. So in order to target that, we've enrolled 103 patients for our phase three trial in conducted in Korea. The yellow bars indicate the age group of patients enrolled under each age group. You can see majority of the majority of the patients who enrolled was from the age of 50 to 65 or 70 and beyond. So. The reason being, in the marketplace, market fracture really can only treat patients with this problem um, under the age of 50, 55, and you've got the artificial knee beyond the age of 50, 75, and you have the gap in the, in the market, there's a real problem, which there's no intervention available for those patients except some painkillers. So the, we, we deliberately enrolled that group of patients to, to test if the cardistem can be effective. 
this is a, a distribution of defect that was treated in each patient uh, 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 randomized into two groups. And you can see the distribution of the size of the defects that we treated go right up to eight to nine square centimeters. So, so we are actually targeting the age problem as well as the size of the defect problem. Um, so this is a table. Um, the end point was really asking, everybody who enrolled was at ACRS grade four with varying sizes. That is a bare bone stage. Single treatment, one year after the scopic second look, we've asked whether they've seen, have regrown cartilage. In other words, the patients become now grade three, two, or one, or better. As you can see on the cardiostem group, that's one out of 43 failed to improve. That is to regenerate cartilage full thickness. And then 71% uh, was uh, improved or regrown cartilage in microfracture. The same data is broken into different age groups. You can see younger the age of 50 on the left column, 100% in both groups. As you go into the 50 to 65 and beyond, you'll see the microfracture right at the bottom with red numbers starting to fail to regenerate cartilage. The other really important component for the regeneration of cartilage is what type of um, histological cartilage you can see. And microfracture is very well known. It grows in younger patients with small defects, but what's known as fibrous type of cartilage, and that's represented in the histological uh, uh, samples there. Uh, what you want in the, in the natural high-line cartilage is those uh, stains with a saffron and RN type 2 collagen, which is found in the biopsy samples We've biopsied everybody in the 103 patient trial uh, at one year time point. Um, and that demonstrates that even a, a young, older patient, this is 65 year old female, with um, 2.25 square centimeter lesion at the time of treatment, not only grows cartilage, but it grows correct type of cartilage. That is because it's actually inducing endogenous regeneration, not replacing with exogenous cells. So in three-year follow-up data, I just want to quickly show you that we've followed the same patients up to three years and asked the, uh, the functional efficacy question. WOMAX scoring is a subjective scoring to indicate um, the patient's uh, functionality. As you can see, the baseline, the lower the score, the better. At one-year time point, we couldn't differentiate between the control group and cardiostem, but at three-year time point, this is single treatment. It's just followed up at three-year time points. You can see that the, the difference is there clearly. And the similar scoring system, IKDC, showing a very similar pattern that the improved functional scores um, from cardiostem treatment group patients uh, sustained in three years. We're currently doing four and five year follow ups uh, of those patients. So, just a quick on market um, uh, study, case study with 57 year old male. This person actually is treated after the approval with four and a half years of history receiving a microfracture, pain scoring 65 which means um, zero is uh, no pain, 100 unbearable pain, 65 is pretty painful. Second microfracture, still no regeneration of cartilage with about 50 on the pain score. Cardiostem treatment, 60 month, six months following this uh, cardiostem single treatment, then there's a regeneration of cartilage. That now the pain score is about five. So the pneumostem is, a, as I said, an orphan indication very quickly, and this is actually a developmental lung disease which affects prematurely born infants. And the approximately 1% of all natural birth babies are high risk in Western countries, including US. That equates to about 40,000 and 50,000 babies per year who are at, at the risk of this. For the last 20 years, there hasn't been no intervention available in, in anywhere in the world approved as a BPD therapy, and those are the numbers are there. And we have published extensively on this in animal models, whereby uh, there's control on the left without treatment on the right you introduce the cells directly to the airway on day five. You can actually see the difference there, uh, prevention of inflammation, infiltration, and then the lung space is preserved. This is a uh, chest x-ray of one of the subjects in phase one trial. This is published. You can see the baby's lung, who was born at just under 26 weeks gestation, with uh, full of fluid inflammation. Um, treatment with cells at day seven clears up the lung, and this baby is healthy, and it was discharged after that. So with this product, we're, as I said, phase one completed and, and, and published. Phase two with 70 subjects have now last patients were enrolled and treated. We're waiting down to the um, uh, follow-up period. An orphan drug uh, designation in US, Korea, and also EMA. US says phase one, two with 12 subjects. We've treated um, six patients. We're on the 50% uh, completion on that in three months' time. We anticipate to finish that by the end of the year. And often drug states obviously give us seven years market exclusivity in the U.S. and 12 years, that is 10 years plus two years of pediatric in Europe. 
So the, our vision here is basically all the products that we do, clinical stage or even some commercial stage in, in, in uh, Korea, which is Blue Bar, and then really bring that into US and then to Europe uh, by doing clinical development here and also seeking some equity financing and, and strategic partnership. Thank you very much.